Finally, after losing or coming in second on, I think, three or four Patreon polls. It's time to watch Hunter x Hunter, starting off immediately with the opening. The song is already a jam. <laughs> I'm getting like, oh yeah, I'm getting super retro vibes from this. This is awesome. An anime running. Oh, more running. Oh yeah. Hitting all the, all the quintessential staples. Very color, high saturation. And One Punch Man was there. Wow, wow, this is, a, this is gonna be a, a cast. <laughs> First impression, briefcase guy is just the man. <laughs> he's, he's gonna be my favorite character. Just kidding, I have no idea. He's not blonde, so how good can he be? I know this is the main character, Gon. Gon? I'm so excited to watch this. I've been like hearing about the show forever. Literally forever. And more anime running. Nailed it. That was a great opening. Just off the bat, the style feels a little bit old, but it's actually kind of charming. I don't think I've ever watched something with this feel on the channel before. It just has nostalgia, like, built in. Kaiju. Shinju. You had me at dinosaurs. <laughs> Hunting for the unknown, that's interesting. Departure X and X Friends. But why do they call it Whale Island? Anime has so destroyed me. That, as always, nothing fills me with more dread than happiness and peace in a village. Too many smiles, just way too many smiles. Too much happiness. Oh, damn, he's got a legacy. It's three minutes into episode one. And I'm already rooting for this kid to catch this fish or whatever it is. <laughs> there, might not, there might be no easier way to get me to root for someone than watching people be dismissive instead of encouraging. Oh, he caught a Gyarados. Yeah, there you go. Where are the haters now? Oh, who, 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 what is the relationship? Damn, that backfired. Gotta honor your promises. You gave him a task and he did it. Get out of this kid's way. <laughs> this story is not as cool as becoming a hunter. But when I was 10 or 11, I, up to that point, had not been allowed to play games, play video games at all, own a console, nothing. But I desperately wanted a PlayStation. As some of you might know, I was a child actor. I had a big audition coming up for a high profile play or theater gig. And my father, who was ultimate gatekeeper of media consumption, made getting a PlayStation conditional on getting that role. You better believe <laughs> that I worked harder on that audition than I ever had before. And I ended up getting the part on the spot. And the absolute best part is immediately after I got the PlayStation, I got fired because I was just totally miscast in the beginning. But man, what a summer. I played PlayStation just as <laughs> vigorously as Gon will surely hunt. He's, he's a baby, even for anime. Sensing there's a story there. Oh no, here it comes. Oh, oh, deeply rooted baggage in this whole occupation. But credit to him for following his destiny. He, yeah, he could have just melted down and uh, hate, hate all hunters and hate everything and no passion and just be listless, which is a common response. But no. This kid has so much credibility already at 12. <laughs> he just says something, I'm like, yeah, he probably will. Even though he has no idea. That's cute. Aww. It's really touching. It's beautiful. Music also is beautiful. Oh, I so poignantly know. <laughs> I feel I know how she feels. Like, she knows so much better than him what he's what awaits him. And there's nothing she can do but watch him go. These are some of the most poignant moments for me in a lot of shows. Like, I frequently think about and mention Iroh Zuko, that farewell. They know. You know, you know the peril. And also, it's hard to be the one left behind, always. It's way easier to be the one departing on a journey. Because you have the excitement of the journey. And you're, you're just coping with the challenges. That consumes a lot of your energy. To be left, you're living the same life minus the person. Things are routine. You're just, you have so much time, space to wonder how the other person is doing. It's very tough to be left behind. But at the same time, if you really care about someone, you recognize 
recognize that they have to follow their destiny. And sometimes it's a real demonstration of love to let someone go. I've had this experience being the one left before. It took me longer to, to understand the other side. I've lived abroad for the past nine years, roughly. I know that people in my life, specifically my parents, you know, my family, would love to have me around, but they've always been so supportive of my travels. In Gon's excitement, he might not recognize that, but it's there. He'll appreciate it one day, most likely. But that scene, just with the way it was drawn and the music, it captured it so perfectly. On, on the plus side, this village survived. It's a miracle. This is anime history. Wow, they're, they just get to live in happiness? What what genre, what media is this? Let, let me not jinx it. Goodbye, Kanto. Oh, it's Suit Dude! And Blonde Girl. <laughs> <laughs> he says as he chugs his liquor. Well, I think we've established the strategy of just not being lower on the totem pole than Katsuo. Just swim a little faster than Katsuo. Don't become Katsuo. A true man of the sea. That island life. Damn. Speaking of men of the sea. Immediately making himself useful and distinguishing himself. Q <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean theme. This kid is 12 years old and in one day he's had a more adventurous life than more people, most people have in their lifetimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may be drunk. <laughs> you may be intoxicated. This doesn't feel very safe, but buckle up. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to join this guy's ship. Gon. Useful. I actually needed that. I can think of one person who's probably standing. Gon is already establishing himself as the master of side quests. No idle moment. Hey, Katsuo made it. Who's bottom of the totem pole now? This kid got something special, obviously. Getting Phoenix Wright vibes. Yeah, he recognized him before. Very analytical. Wow, this is a lot. This is a lot to unravel. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. I, I, I relate. As an overthinker and over explainer, I love you. The timing of this is interesting, actually, because I've been recently getting back into the works of Robert Greene. The most famous book of his probably being The 48 Laws of Power, about how to amass influence and get what you want and command power over others. In a podcast, I heard him discuss one of the most common objections to his works, which are, aren't these just tools used for evil? Should we really be seeking to play games and enact influence over our fellow man through deception and wearing masks, etc.? To me, I never thought of it that way. Like, I think the, the reason to understand power games is so that you're not susceptible to power games. One thing I heard him discuss in the podcast, though, that I'd never considered and I thought was a very interesting way of framing it, as to look at it as a form of play. We enjoy thinking of ourselves in narratives. We enjoy emulating people we admire or characters we admire or whatever. When you're in the social world, you are presenting something, right? And it's interesting to think about that as a state of play and a state of fun that you get to choose and mold your image in a way that's enjoyable, brings out the best in you, and doesn't necessarily have to be deceitful. There's the argument of being yourself, but I mean, I think what you are can be crafted and can be molded to a certain degree. Why not when appropriate try on personas that feel good, you know, they feel like they benefit you? <laughs> Why does he have authority on the exam board? Whoops. Got it. It's like ESL language education in Korea, complete with the instructors being drunk. Damn. Speaking of darkness, spurning the, the quest. She says, I haven't seen this much vengeance on a boat since Katara. Really? 
Oh, he just really shushed him. Money, yeah, there you go. Something about the suit and briefcase. Man, honorifics is serious business. <laughs> to end someone's life over it. I legit have seen fights break out over this in Korea. As long as they don't die. This guy's surprisingly stable for being an alcoholic and being on a boat. It was just involved. <laughs> Why is this so cool? Why does the suit make it so much cooler? It's just so out of place, but so great. I love the clash of like their different styles. Oh, he brought a knife. I was hoping it'd be a gun, but okay. There you go. True hearts uncovered. Whoops. Going, yeah. Even he's surprised. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> nice. And a trio was born, or quad quadro. What a day. <laughs> Some thoughts on this emerging crew. Leo Rio, his stated motivation is money. I, I suspect that either it's actually more than that or will become more than that, like we've seen in My Hero Academia with Uraraka. But actually, I have no issue with the, the money as the stated motivation for launching the journey. It's tough because I think there are things we all know that we really want that are that are bigger, that we feel we can attain, so we, we aim for something lower. But inevitably, we'll end up at a bigger goal that we always knew we wanted. And so it's better to just cut right to the chase and get to that from the beginning, as difficult as it seems. At the same time, there's a huge risk of that because a lot of people get stuck with just too great of a task they're not ready for or waiting for the perfect ambition, going in circles, wondering what their purpose is. From experience, I'd say it's much more useful, much better to just pick like the best one that's staring at you, you know, the lowest hanging fruit and go for it. And it, it'll inevitably run its course if it's actually you following some instinct. I've been thinking a lot about destiny lately for some reason. And the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that it's it's a real thing, not a mystical force, but something very tangible that if you zoom way out, actually you can consider to be divine, you know, from the origin, from the source, because you're born into this complex chain of cause and effect. You're born with natural stats, you have aptitudes, you have your physicality, and then you have your early childhood experience which is largely not your control. You're still kind of an automaton at that point. So you're no longer this blank slate, right? You have a history. You have a role, a position in time and space that will inform a lot of things. Like it informs what you're naturally interested in, what you're naturally good at, what things you're afraid of and hate and want to avoid, questions that you have like going dangerous for yourself based on your natural personality and experience, which can be conquered. And maybe at the highest point, a gift you can contribute to the world using your unique combination. So amazingly, I think you have a rough path that would be optimal. I mean, it could be, it could go in more than one direction in terms of the circumstantial elements of it, but there's a path to travel that is very relevant to you. And it's not guaranteed. You know, there's a big risk of not following and not, not realizing the potential, not, you know, completing arcs. So in the case of the characters, whatever it is, even if it's incomplete, like Gon's stated ambition is just like layer on top of layer on top of layer of what it really is, right? But he'll discover that. I have a feeling, or maybe it's a hope that if you follow those instincts, you follow that journey, you almost can't get it wrong as long as you keep yourself open, continue to learn, continue to strive for, for that kind of adventure. <laughs> oh, why is it so cute? Please take care of yourself, Katsu. Yeah, she's on her fix. I wonder if her refusal to use that in the beginning has to do with like a past betrayal or abuse by authority. This whole episode has been one giant party from the captain start to finish. That was it. You passed. <laughs> I purposely drove into that storm because I'm drunk and crazy. Oh, I feel like we're going to travel a very long, long distance to get there. I haven't met that kid yet. This is so like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I don't have like musical terms. This is so like classic anime. I love it. What the hell was that? I wonder what the villains in the show will be like. Oh man, we're just just tripling down on the running. <laughs> this kid just never takes his hands out of his pockets. It's permanently fused. It's just too cool. 
Love it. Love both the opening and the ending. That was just fun. <laughs> that was just a lot of fun. From start to finish, there's not a dull moment. First impression, like I said, it feels dated, but I, I actually love this. I think this is the style that I grew up on. So it's kind of reverting me to a state where I was more impressionable and like anime was so striking, was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. I just kind of have that locked into my memory. So that's fun. Music is great. It's like perfectly punctuates some of the emotional moments, which are also really well depicted, like the goodbye scene. It's not just action, but there's something really playful about it. There's this playful element they captured, like catching the fish. It's not just like him struggling and getting dragged, right? It's like the way he wrapped around the tree and things like that. About the tone, while I know very little about the show, one thing I've heard consistently is that it's very rich thematically and, and character-wise, but it starts off a little bit lighter, which of course is absolutely fine. Like I think the first couple episodes, there's a lot to do. You got to introduce characters, set the stage of the journey, establish the whole world and its feel. And this episode did that near perfectly. It's, it's very engaging, really just fun to watch. But at the same time, already just given the level of attention to things and the details of the character, characters and the fact that they feel so distinct and they all have very separate approaches and journeys. Like a lot of great shows, it's it's immediately instilling me with faith in the overall process and vision and story. Also, this might be hard to articulate, there's like a pain underneath the, the jolliness of it. Like I look at Gon, he's such a happy kid. He's so bright and full of energy and kindness and compassion for others. There's just like a real sadness in him that I feel just knowing his situation and hearing him talk about his intention. Like he's suppressing a lot of stuff like this exuberance for the the hunter stuff. That feels like him trying to hold this like broken vase together as tightly as he can. But the cracks are already there. And that's going to come out. His father left him. You know, his father abandoned him. I mean, granted 12 is 18 in anime age. It's still a kid. He's this naive boy that just bit off way more than he can chew. And I feel like it's going to be painful to watch that unfold. But also glorious to see how his character emerges out of that and into so much more i mean like i said whatever launches you on the journey the destiny i was talking about earlier you can't possibly know the trajectory because some of that is circumstance some of it is what you run into but those instincts and it's hard to explain but you know it when you feel it are not random they're they're like what you need most in a lot of cases even if it's like a misstep you know even if it's a step towards darkness as long as you can keep going through it as long as you have the right tools and it doesn't destroy you it will be like a darkness that you need to cope with and face because it's a mirror of your personality based on all those things i mentioned like your, your base aptitudes your early childhood experience your trauma etc people's compulsions are not accidental there's a gravity that you can feel but not understand except perhaps in hindsight this is also more i think directly visible with the blonde girl's character because she just straight up stated her her trauma right and her immediate quest is vengeance so i suspect that will also become more like katara before her even the money i would say money as a motivation often reveals something similar like powerlessness or a desire to help others that is not yet matched by ability. It could be attention. It could be feeling like that's the only way people would desire you romantically. It could be just absolute hatred of one's daily existence. I mean, it could be so many things, but it's not really ever about the money. But perhaps that's partly why it's so beneficial to explore because that's, you know, that's the glaring thing. That's what your, your mind or body is telling you that you need to follow. Following that path deep enough will reveal like the next closest thing to what the actual issue is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because, you know, to take money as an example, let's say you get the money. Well, there's going to be a stage after that. You're not completely because now you have money, right? Your, your situation might be better, but you're not going to be able to buy existential satisfaction, you know? Not saying that this is necessarily what it will turn out to be for Gon, but for people in a situation, what I think it often might be, it's not really, definitely not a quest to be a hunter. Not even a quest to understand his father, but a quest to find one's place, to feel accepted, to feel useful, to earn one's place, to prove yourself to yourself because of the, the anxieties of being left behind or whatever it might be. There's so much to tap into. There's so deep it, it can go. It's really exciting to see how it unfolds.